gradually degrading the quality of their coolers over the past few years, which isn't really a surprise. So the Cord 2 Duo series of processors had a thick and robust copper and aluminum heatsink style, and then the early Core series had a smaller version of the same design, but still had copper inside of them. And then, starting at the Skylake series, Intel suddenly started bundling all aluminum coolers with their processors. So then one question kind of remains, how do the new aluminum coolers stack up? So I obtained two fairly recent Intel coolers. One of them is a Skylake all aluminum cooler, and the other is a Haswell cooler with copper inside of it. So I started by testing both coolers on my 51 watt Celeron processor. And I applied some fresh thermal paste and proceeded to fire up IO64, running a stress test obviously as usual. And to my surprise, the aluminum cooler actually came out on top, which I was a bit confused about because I tried the same test on my i5, 91 watt processor, and it still had the same exact result. So at this point, I was kind of beginning to think that the copper coolers were more effective after a certain TDP range. And naturally, I tested this theory. The highest TDP processor I have is a 105 watt Core 2 Quad Q6600, and since the coolers weren't quite designed to be used on Socket 7.5, which is what the CPU uh, was designed for, I took the metal parts out of the coolers and laid them on top of the CPU, plopping a case fan on top of it. So, did the CPU catch on fire, or did the coolers do their job? Find out next time! No, but seriously, the copper cooler actually came out on top this time, with about a 4 degrees Celsius difference. So, kind of in conclusion, uh, that's all well and good, but what are the takeaways? Well, I guess the cheaper coolers Intel is making uh, now aren't that bad for lower TDP processors. And I guess Intel doesn't see a need for so much copper in coolers nowadays since TDPs in processors are getting lower as the processors become more power efficient. But if you're planning to do any sort of overclocking, well, definitely go for a copper cooler. But did I need to really tell you that? Anyways, guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a short video. It did take quite a bit of time uh, to do considering I had to do <laughs> like six processor tests for this video. But anyways, guys, I'm out. I'll see you in the next one.